Hello everyone, I have a new video today that it's going to be about the laws of stupidity as you've probably seen from the title and um, it's about this paper that a uh, Italian economist wrote it's mostly like an essay of sorts um, doesn't have any scientific data more like observations behind it but I do find it a very interesting concept and uh, I wanted to share it with, uh, with everyone um, so the, the laws of stupidity was written by uh, uh, Mr. Cipolla um, in somewhere in the 70s um, and it states the following there are five laws of stupidity that the person uh, observed uh, this economist and um, they are as following the first one is that everyone underestimates the number of stupid individuals in circulation which is kind of an excuse for not knowing the number in my opinion but it's also a very interesting um, supposition so you you have people who you judged as being intelligent and smart and uh, rational right? and they turn out to be not that way um, and it also deals with the harassment that uh, stupid individuals um, inflict upon you you know while you try to do some activity, whatever it is, work, study, whatever it is, um, and it comes up in the most inconvenient and uh, inappropriate moments. I think it's funny in a way, uh, but you can't really, I think this kind of, uh, the fact that you underestimate, it's like you're always surprised by it something in that area. <laughs> um, the second law is that this variable, stupidity, so the, pro the probability that a certain person is stupid is independent of any other characteristics of the person. So any other variables, for example, gender, location, how, you know, even uh, psychological kind of uh, variables like, you know, how was the person's up upbringing? Did they have education? How much education did they have? I, were they, fe were, uh, um, are they wealthy? Are they, um, yeah, so everything is not connected to this variable which is an independent kind of variable even depends on how how you define intelligence but we'll we'll get to that and basically it says that in one group wherever it is and doesn't matter where it is you always find kind of the same percentage of stupid people um, and no matter the, the field and the uh, group. The third one is the definition of stupidity. Uh, so a stupid person by this, uh, this essay is a person who causes losses to another person while himself incurring no, no gains and even possibly incurring losses for himself as well. So there was this matrix uh, that it's in the paper. Um, it's quite interesting to... So here on the bottom left, you see there are the, the stupid people. No, no gains for them, even, you know, it's minus gain. So it's basically uh, losses for themselves, losses for, for the groups or for the society, let's say other people, yeah. And you have, uh, 
on the bottom right, you have bandits, which I think is a very aptly named group <laughs> because they gain for themselves, but also not for others. So mostly they take from others for themselves. There's also uh, the helpless people, which are on the top left here. Uh, you can see that these helpless people are mostly people who themselves gain, are uh, incurring losses, but they are gaining something for other people. And I think you, we can include here any sort of human relationship. Uh, for example, uh, an employee with an employer, right? If the employer has all the power or the employee has all the power, the other side is basically left hope, helpless, right? You cannot negotiate well in this sort of... And if you're negotiating with a bandit, then that makes it even harder to do. <laughs> um, and of course, top right, intelligent people who gain something themselves and also make other people gain as well. So it's a win-win kind of situation. But what was most, most interesting for this definition is that nowhere in this definition is it ever mentioned that you need to have an education, you need to do this, you need to do that in order to become more intelligent. Or it is like a social, social construct of sorts. And I find that very interesting. Um, and of course you can categorize people on this kind of matrix, but you can also categorize actions, which I think that is basically how you can write like a sum of some of their actions. You, you sum sum them up, and you're like, okay, average is kind of here. But um, in this way, I think you can also judge your own actions. Are my actions intelligent? Are they? Am I, am I acting from a bandit kind of perspective, or am I acting from a helpless perspective? Is there nothing I can do, and I'm just waiting for the mercy of others, while giving it all myself? So, one thing that is kind of, uh, if you compare, right? So, the bottom of the ma matrix is basically negative value for the groups or for other people, right? And if you take into account bandits, uh, bandits have a little bit of rationality where they judge situations or um, gains based on what they want and what they get. So if you see that a person is kind of acting like a bandit, you might be able to guess more or not the probabilistic error, but more or, or less you can guess what, what are they thinking, how are they processing this information. While what Mr. Cipolla says in his essay is that the rules for rationality are out for the stupid people. You cannot guess what they would do because it's not rational at all. Um, the fourth law states that non-stupid people, so all the three other quadrants, um, they always underestimate the damaging power <laughs> of stupid individuals. And they constantly forget that associating or working dealing with stupid individuals always turns out to be a costly mistake. Um, I, I don't think there's much to say about this one. It's usually I think people kind of, that's the way I kind of do it myself is I kind of see the person in a good light at first and if they don't do anything to disappoint me or to 
break that trust that I'm giving. And the fifth law is that a stupid person is the most dangerous type of person. Even more dangerous than a bandit, which is kind of what we discussed before with the bandits and of, based on rationality. But this time, if we look at value provided, um, sometimes the bandit can provide some value, more value to themselves and than to others, of course, but sometimes they provide value without incurring losses. So that's, it brings a little plus to society because then he distributes that value by buying things. So um, the economy kind of, kind of grows in a way. So there are some exploits who are marginally beneficial, uh, even in bandits. Uh, but with stupid people, the society is just impoverished. So you have to think about the trading of value, basically, um, which is what I think is the solution to to this kind of problem in a way. So if every person would judge some of their actions by this matrix, I think the, we can, I think each person can tweak, think right now on some of the major actions that you've taken in your life, major decisions. Um, were they better for you than for others? Were they better for others than for you? Were they mutually beneficial or they don't even have to be major, major decisions, just normal day to day decisions. Like when you're in traffic and you decide to go to another lane or when you're walking down the street and decide to cross, uh, cross the street where you are, deciding to buy something, deciding to not buy something. Deciding to go on a vacation, deciding to, right? So all of these are decisions which can be placed on this matrix. And I think it's, uh, it's interesting to do and it provides a little bit of awareness of, uh, you know, how your actions impact others, which, which is kind of the basics of this theory, I think. Um, it's more of a social stupidity, let's, let's say it. Um, and... Another thing that uh, at the end of the essay, um, I'll put the essay down in the comments, by the way, if you want to read it, uh, it's a PDF version, so it's, about, I think it's nine pages long, so it's not very long, also has pictures, which are fun. Um, but what uh, Mr. Cipola says in the, in, the, in the end of this essay is that most countries that are impoverished are actually putting people in the bottom left quadrant in power. So when those people get in power, things start going down rapidly. So I think it's one of our duties as citizens is to try not to do this, not to um, give power to people that are like this and to try to give power to intelligent people which I think is, explains a little bit why some societies are moving forward faster than others. Um, yeah, I think that was about it. Let me know what you think about this, um, this concept. And um, yeah, I like the fact that it's, for example, not related to IQ or to, which is a different thing, I think, from this perspective. Um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments, which one was the, the law that kind of made you say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, leave a comment below uh, and yeah, see you in the next one. All the best.